يقول وهادي نمضي وسودا لا نخشال وغادي نمضي جنودا نمضي وسودا نمضي جنودا نمضي وسودا نمضي جنودا نجوب الوهادي نمضي وسودا لا نخشال وغادي نمضي جنودا نجوب الوهادي نمضي وسودا لا نخشال وغادي نمضي جنودا نمضي وسودا نمضي جنودا نمضي وسودا وأرض الإباء الباغي عداها حتى دو ندفع الحق قضاء وأرض الإباء الباغي عداها حتى دو ندفع الحق قضاء حي حشودا للرب سجودا حي حشودا للرب سجودا نمض جنودا نجوب الوهادي نمض اسودا لا نخشى الوغادي نمض جنودا نجوب الوهادي نمض اسودا لا نخشى الوغادي نمض جنودا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على خاتم الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعليه وصحبه اجمعين وبعد in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, I begin with the greeting words of the righteous. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It is again a great privilege for me uh, to be with you tonight. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take these few moments and make them uh, as part of our hasanat on the day of judgment. And that Allah would forgive us for our shortcomings. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, uh, friends, guests, we are living in very crucial times. And many of the decisions that we are making today will have profound influence upon our families and the world that we are living in. And Muslims in particular need to have basira, need to have the ability to look at events not only on the surface, but to begin to look through the surface inside of what is actually happening. And the best way that we can do that is to constantly return to our sources, to Al-Wahi, to the revelation, to what has been revealed by the Creator of the heavens and the earth, and to what was given to the last Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The political systems of the world have failed us. Socialism has failed. The capitalism is failing. Tribalism, nationalism, all the different isms and schisms that have plagued the Muslim world and the oppressed people throughout the planet have failed in bringing about unity and love and cooperation and the type of a world that we could live in as human beings, live a good existence with our fellow human beings, and pass through this world. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, with over 100,000 followers in his last sermon, his Arafat sermon, laid down important principles. He made it clear to the believers that there is nothing worthy of worship but Allah, but the creator of the heavens and the earth that he is the last messenger and that all of their business dealings all of their economic dealings done in ignorance should be abolished that they should not involve themselves in oppression in any way that there is no preference for, for Arabs over non-Arabs or non-Arabs over Arabs there is no preference no higher place for white over black or black over white but that taqwa, piety and right action, this is the only uh, thing that, should, that separates people. 
The Prophet peace be upon him also told us that men have rights over women, but women also have rights over men. And that the evil one has despaired of being followed in the Arabian Peninsula. Beware of him in other lands. That he would attack you in small affairs. And he told us very clearly, I have left you two things. If you follow these two things, you will never go astray. And that is the book of Allah and his sunnah. And so we seek refuge in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has given us the bottom line, who has given us the ultimate communication between creator and created. And Allah has told us very clearly in his book, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين O you who believe have the consciousness of Allah and be with the truthful and our scholars have shown us that a sidq is not only truth in words but the heart should confirm what we say and the limbs should practice that which we believed in and that which we confirmed in our heart and that which we said we should practice what we preach and so the truthful ones are not only those who claim to be on the right path but those who are actually doing the work of those who are on the right path those who have humbled themselves to the creator who are not arrogant to other people who are not filled with racism and classism and tribalism and who are ready to submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has also blessed us with the last messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, who did not speak from himself. But he spoke from revelation. And what he gave us in his authentic hadith is a direct message from Allah through a human being to us that we could also benefit from this. And when he spoke to the Sahaba, he not only spoke to them concerning their affairs, but he spoke to them concerning times that would come in the future. And in one hadith which is reported by Imam al-Suyuti and by Imam al-Suyuti in al jami al sahih Abu Huraira radiallahu an reports that the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said, Yakunu fi akhir zaman dajjalun kathabun. يَعْتُونَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَحَدِيثِ بِمَا لَمْ تَسْمَعُوا أَنْتُمْ وَلَا أَبَاؤُكُمْ فَإِيَّاكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ لَا يُدِلُّونَكُمْ وَلَا يُفْتِنُونَكُمْ The Prophet peace be upon him said there would come in the end of time great liars كَذَّابُونَ دَجَّالُونَ to the point where they are false Christs claiming to be false prophets would lead you astray and they will come to you with a type of speech that you nor your parents have ever heard of before beware of them beware that they take you astray beware that they put you into a fitna a trial and a, tempta and a temptation and so the prophet peace and blessings be upon him did not speak from himself. And we are witnessing today with the advent of the new technology that human beings have the ability to send information throughout the planet simultaneously. We have the ability to witness events here in Australia that could be happening in other parts of the world. In Europe, we could witness these events. But at the same time, we can be confused simultaneously. The whole world can be lied to at once. And they have the ability to twist around, to, to develop, to put together images and sounds, and to develop the story, which although it is not true, appears to be true. And, and, and you know it's not true but you watch it as though it is true and it affects the way you think. And so as the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Sadaqa Rasulullah, alayhi salatu wasalam, they will come to you with a type of speech 
that you nor your parents have ever heard of before. You've never heard this thing before. Sadaqa Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. As a young American growing up in North America, mainly of African American heritage, I began to look for my roots, to look into my family, to try to connect this with what I was seeing on the television and what I was being given in the educational system. And one of my grandparents was a native, as you would call the aboriginals, you would say it here in Australia. One of my grandparents was an aboriginal person in North America. And they told us that the Indians, and that's the first lie, because Columbus was lost and he bumped into America and he called it in India. He thought he was an Indian. So he called the people Indians. But they told us and showed us in films that the Indians were a savage people. And they were always attacking the wagon trains. They were always killing their enemies and they were even scalping their enemies. And you will be surprised to know that the first scalping was done by extremists amongst the European settlers. They were the first to scalp. And as a reaction to this, the native people began to take their scalps. But it comes to you in a totally different way. They also told us that Columbus discovered America that he discovered these lands as though there is nobody living here. But when you read the writings of Ferdinand Columbus, his son, and he was the one who, who stepped on the mainland. Columbus never stepped on the mainland. He only touched the islands. But when Ferdinand wrote about Mexico, he said he found a massive city as large as anything in Europe with hanging gardens, with pyramids, with all the trappings of civilization. And when the conquistadores went south to Peru, they found in the Inca civilization, they found high intelligence, and they found amongst the people of the south calendars that were similar to the ancient Egyptian calendars. They found astronomy, technology, all types of science and knowledge. When they went no north into North America, they found highly organized people. Amongst the Cherokee Nation, there were cities of over 100,000 people with three-story buildings. We don't hear this. They also found the Iroquois Confederacy, and it was the agreement made between the Iroquois Nation that was the basis of the United States Constitution. They don't tell you that. They don't tell you what they found in the Americas. And after that, a genocide occurred. And so by saying they discovered America, they own America, they own these lands, they try to justify the mass murder that took place in millions of the native peoples from South America to Central to North America were wiped out through the killing of, of their stock by giving them blankets filled with deadly diseases that they had no cures for. And so they died by the hundred thousands and even the millions. But we hear stories about the cowboys and the Indians. And it gives you a totally different picture. And they make it seem so true that you get confused and they go so far even to name their baseball teams after the people they have killed and put in reservations. And so they have a type of speech, a way to twist the truth and reality that we have never seen before in a civilization. To the African Americans, to our people, they told us that we are free. And after the so-called freedom, we couldn't find jobs. We couldn't find decent places to live. We could not find education. And so it reached a point up until now, when you see this beautiful image of America, the reality is totally different. And you will be surprised to know that one in every four African Americans will go to jail at one point in his life. 25% will enter the prison. You will be surprised to know that 
of 8 million people who are in jail, in prisons, incarceration internationally, 